Anno 1800 turns 4 this year, and after these 4 years of post-release development, patches, updates, and of course various DLCs, the developers have announced the end of content packs. Thanks to releases back onto the Steam platform and the new console versions of Anno 1800, we see an influx of new and returning players that may be a bit confused on what's on offer in each season and in each DLC. Well, this video is here to summarize them all into an easy to digest tier list. This is the definitive DLC tier list for Anno 1800. In general, I find none of the DLCs outright bad. It's a testament to the game and devs that each and every DLC has their own appeal for any type of player. But after hundreds of hours of playing, testing and evaluation through the four years and all four seasons, this is an opportunity to reevaluate all the DLCs against each other once and for all definitively. All gameplay oriented DLCs will be considered, including the day one Anarchist DLC and all seasonal packs from season one, two, three and four. We'll also provide our standalone scores for each DLC that we rated on release and our re-evaluated scores for 2023 against their price, as a further metric for players to form their own opinions. If you want a more in-depth review on any of these seasons, be sure to check out our Anno 1800 review series, totaling three hours of content that breaks down every single aspect of the base game and its DLCs for a full and expansive analysis. But in this video, we'll be categorizing the gameplay DLCs into each of these four tiers. Tier C, optional. These are generally DLCs that have limited application to the holistic Anno 1800 experience and are mostly geared towards flavor and lack synergy with many other DLCs. Players should consider grabbing these at their own discretion. Tier B, are our recommended expansions. Most players will have great mileage with these DLCs as they contain decent gameplay additions that will be useful and flavorful, meshing well with other content packs and thus worth a purchase for anyone. Tier A is our essential listing. Anno 1800 should be bundled with these DLCs because they frankly introduce too important of mechanics, too fundamental to the gameplay experience. And finally, we have our tier S. We've reserved this tier for the premier selection of DLCs that represent the best of them all. Don't even bother launching the game without these installed. Tier C starts off with Season 1's Botanica. Introducing the Botanical Gardens building, this modular cultural building plays very similar to the base game's zoo and museum allowing players to showcase a variety of exotic flora acquired from trade, expeditions, and the World's Fair, with completion of theme sets providing global bonuses. It's another great collect them all incentive Anno 1800 does so well. Botanica thus adds much greenery and vibrancy to the city landscape, especially with its music pavilion and other miscellaneous ornaments. Though, ultimately, this is almost a purely cosmetic DLC that will appeal to players looking to add more natural beauty to their cities, but mileage will be limited for those focusing more on gameplay. Botanica is a very flavorful and pretty DLC, but it's completely optional. Another gorgeous looking DLC that has unfortunately been overshadowed by later expansions is The Passage. Introducing a new region in the Arctic, this peaceful yet somber region is the setting for a side story inspired by the lost expeditions of HMS Erebus and HMS Terror as they attempted to find the Arctic Northwest Passage. New population tiers in explorers and technicians can be housed in this region to extract Arctic gas, another source of fuel for electricity, and construct airships, a new form of transport. But with small islands and the issue of cold weather, keeping populations warm and cozy in the limited amount of building space will be an interesting challenge for players. What's unfortunate for the passage is that the Arctic has proven to be too insignificant, with gas too tedious of a resource to extract, and airships made redundant by the sheer variety and flexibility offered with the later Empires of the Skies DLC. 
After finishing the storyline, players will find the Arctic to only be a burden on resources and attention, and so it's a consideration for players wanting more side content, but otherwise completely optional. Season 3's Docklands is an attempt to not only spice up the harbour area of the old world, but also provide some useful gameplay features to assist resource wastage and efficiency. This comes in the form of a modular harbour building called the Docklands, with each module performing different functions. Overall, it improves trade efficiency by expanding the harbour and, with the new ornaments, also adds some architecture to a city's port area. The import-export feature within Docklands is quite useful for exporting wasted resources or specialising in overproduced ones, as well as correcting any supply chain scarcities with a periodic dedicated trader. And the DLC includes a new ship in the world-class reefer, which features a speed upgrade on standard cargo ships. All that being said, Docklands is entirely skippable. The cosmetics grimy industrial aesthetic contrasts significantly to the regal imperial aesthetic to the rest of the game, and the import-export mechanics is only a minor addition with little applicability to more advanced players. The world-class reefer also gets power creeped by bigger and faster methods of transport later on. First on our tier B recommended listing is the Anarchist Day 1 DLC. Mostly, the reasoning is because it is quite a unique concept that is fairly different from the other DLCs by introducing a new AI opponent in Dr. Hugo Mercia, alongside access to exclusive quests and mechanics and a range of new items. Although it's not explicitly detailed, I find that Hugo Mercia is one of the more challenging AI opponents, even if he is only rated advanced or the second highest difficulty setting. His aggressive expansionist playstyle and stubborn defensiveness makes him one of the more challenging AI players to trifle with, whilst his influence in the player's newspaper propaganda, defection of talent from his islands, and the new items from the DLC all bring more variety to the gameplay loop. I find the content offered and his personality interesting enough to always add Hugo Mercia to one of my Anno 1800 sessions. But the only way to get him now is to upgrade to the Deluxe Pack. The DLC isn't sold separately anymore, so most players can skip and enjoy the game without him. Recommended, but not essential. Seat of Power is a small size DLC which focuses on one major concept, the ability to construct the palace and issue wide-ranging edicts to improve various aspects of cities. Essentially a government building DLC, Seat of Power's palace is built in modular sections, so there's a lot of creativity in designing it, and its architectural style should make for a magnificent centerpiece within cities. The palace also houses five governmental departments that can enact one policy each. These policies scale with levels of prestige and provide powerful bonuses across the island. I've come to appreciate the policies as my save has grown over the years, especially in the ultra late game when cities reach tens of thousands in population and here the policies can scale dramatically. Overall, Cedar Power is a lightweight DLC with simple and straightforward mechanics that's fun to add into any session, recommended for creative casuals and mid-maxing players alike. Empire of the Skies expands upon the airship mechanics introduced with the passage, but in some ways completely eclipses and makes the latter redundant. Various models of airships in different sizes and speeds can be constructed in the rigid airship hangar, and with the airship platform, these airships can be used to transport goods and commute workers across islands. And also, a pretty flavorful postal service is added to send mail to populations across your game world and giving correspondingly powerful buffs. However, Empire of the Skies tends to muddy the experience a bit as it layers on extra busy work with now a new theater in the air for transport and warfare. This can be worth it for a late game challenge, since the game tends to get quite easy for advanced players, and so you want the AI building airships and defending against airships if you want that. 
In saying that, I do discourage this DLC for newer or more casual players as it introduces complex systems and production chains that are not essential to the Anno 1800 experience. Our Tier A begins with Season 2's Bright Harvest, one of the DLCs that adds a crucial cog to the Anno 1800 machine. What I mean by that is the systems introduced in this expansion, once utilized, become quintessential additions that will be used over and over again and again. The addition of the silo for animal farms and tractors for plant farms dramatically increases their productivity a massive mathematical net gain that sees huge efficiency boosts for the entire agricultural sector. This DLC does have its fair share of complexity, especially around strategic placement, but in the long run, players just save so much space that Bright Harvest is an essential and cheap DLC inclusion. It's just the overall well-designed DLC that is vital for any deep playthrough into Anno 1800. Season 2's Land of Lions is quite possibly the largest content expansion of Anno 1800, featuring a new African-inspired region with new production chains, population tiers, mechanics and several storylines. The theme and atmosphere of this DLC brings a unique flair and diversity to the game that makes it a standout inclusion. The region of Mbessa is beautifully crafted yet challenging with its lack of arable land requiring the use of the new irrigation system. Furthermore, it adds a university district for cities with the introduction of scholars and the research institute. Here, players can identify and produce items, recruit talent or acquire cultural artifacts, and they can research revolutionary concepts like the Great Eastern Ship with its massive eight item slots, change deposits and fertility by mastering nature, or produce coffee, rum or cotton directly in the old world with new production methodologies. Frankly, the research system is one of the required features of Anno 1800 in retrospect and why this DLC is considered essential. The major concern to Land of Lions is its extreme amount of bloat. It's probably the most complex out of all the Anno 1800 expansions, so it's quite tedious to sift through all the content with a steep learning curve to boot. So even though I consider it an essential DLC, I think retrospectively it may have been better to split this DLC apart into two smaller ones, with one covering the university system and another covering the Mbessa region, especially given it is the most expensive Anno 1800 DLC. Nevertheless, there's plenty of discovery and exploration in Mbessa, this expansion offering a heavy amount of adventure-like story and world-building content. If you thought base game Anno 1800 was a bit light on the aspects of tourism, then Season 3's Tourist Season is right up your alley. Attract tourists into your city with hotels, build restaurants, cafes and bars, and place bus networks so tourists can travel around to all the wonderful attractions your city has on offer. And of course, build your own version of the Parisian Eiffel Tower as another centerpiece monument of your city. Tourist Season is just a fun and upbeat DLC. The great thing is it encourages players to build up their cultural projects and gives a purpose for fleshing out zoos and museums. It also has great synergy with earlier and later DLCs. Tourists will flock to Botanica's Gardens or Seed of Power's Palace and so Tourist Season is an essential pick for flavour, architecture and synergy. The High Life is a transformation to the late game Anno 1800 city building experience. With the ability to house engineers and investors in skyscrapers, and these skyscrapers can get higher and higher, this DLC adds so much strategic depth, long-term city planning and population density that it's so vital for extended playthroughs and I've come to appreciate this DLC more as my own save progresses. Couple that with shopping arcades and multi-factories, the high life represents a challenging but very worthwhile learning curve that essentially extends the end game indefinitely. 
and of course also features an ambitious monument to round it all out, your very own Empire State Building Skyline Tower that can fit a whopping 4,000 investors. How many people can you try to fit in your cities? How high can your population soar? These questions are only answerable with the High Life DLC. Season 4's Seeds of Change rounds out our essential listing by optimizing systems in the New World region. The Hacienda Complex is a modular all-in-one solution that serves as a policy hub, warehouse, population center, agricultural plantation, and brewery. Space, efficiency, and centralization are the core themes of this DLC, and it attempts to create a unified city center for the New World colonies. Furthermore, it adds a whole new system around fertilizer. Like Bright Harvest, this again drastically shakes up the agricultural system by adding yet another method to further increase farming productivity, propelling this DLC into the essential tier. We've reached the S tier of DLCs. These two expansions I simply cannot imagine playing Anno 1800 without. The first is Season 1's Sunken Treasures, and the major reason why this DLC is in this category is the addition of the Cape Trelawney region, an alternative old world region that includes Crown Falls. This is a scenic, expansive, continent-sized island with enough building space and resources to become the central population center for any session. In fact, with this DLC, I encourage players to rush colonization of this region as soon as possible without investing too much into the old world, as once established, Crown Falls and the other islands within the Cape Trelawney region become quite self-sustainable. Sunken Treasures also features the diving bell system and salvager ship to find treasures on the ocean floor, a great minigame of sorts to burn time during periods of respite, whilst acting as another method to acquire animals and artifacts for cultural attractions. All this is packaged within a pretty compelling side story that represents one of the better mission sequences for Anno 1800 DLCs. With Sunken Treasures, the developers knew exactly what players were missing, a super massive sandbox area to build the city of their dreams. With endless acres of farming land, stretches of coastline and natural resources aplenty, Paired with immensely replayable side content, Sunken Treasures is a must purchase for all players. In a similar vein, New World Rising brings like-minded concepts but entirely for the New World. By expanding the map and introducing the island of Manola, players can establish a base of operations here that can flourish to become a second imperial capital with a new population tier, new production chains, and the prospect of introducing electricity to industry and agriculture, greatly enhancing the efficiency of this region, a constant struggle in the vanilla base game. New World Rising also features two monuments in the Hydroelectric Dam and Grand Stadium as worthy and powerful endgame projects. If you ever found the New World to be lacking in entertainment and often thought it was just a side theatre to exploit resources from, then New World Rising flips that idea on its head by dynamically transforming the region into an extension of your empire rather than just a foreign colony. With Manola, there is a potential for it to be a vibrant cultural hub that will be sure to steal the player's attention and serve as a secondary theatre in the gameplay loop. And that's our tier list. It's subjective, of course, but this list should serve to be a better indicator of Anno 1800's diverse DLCs, even if mileage will ultimately vary for a lot of players. Again, no Anno 1800 DLC is inherently bad, and if you want the full experience, this is one of the very few games where I can say that owning all the content expansions is potentially worth it. I'd love to see other people's thoughts on the entire Anno 1800 catalogue, so feel free to share your own tier list in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed today's content, like and subscribe for more reviews and analytical videos from a wide variety of games. If you want to support us even further, you can pledge on our Patreon for as little as a dollar a month.